Hello. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Git, which is a distributed version control system. So the first, um, why do we need the Git? Basically, we need Git because the team is coding and we have several people assessing the code and changing the, the files that have the code. The best way to realize how this is a problem is that what you have learned about um, resource contention. So you learn about this in uh, first probably in operating systems where you use uh, synchronization primitives and then in uh, databases where you learn about transactions on how to uh, manage the, the accesses to shared data. And actually you have, are having the same problem here. You have a large group of people that uh, want to access the files. And some of the approaches that you learn do not work in this context basically because you cannot just lock a file and say people, that people cannot work. So, why? Because then we'll be waiting for a long time to do their work and we want that the, the developers develop the, the code uh, at the same time, okay, and probably changing the same files. So, what is the solution that the, the version control systems do? Well, the solution they have what is usually called an optimistic approach where people work on versions and they only detect conflicts on commit time. So you do your work, you change whatever you want to change and when you commit, the system tells you where there's a, con a conflict. And contrarily to other more automatic systems, in this context, you have to deal with the, with the conflict and solve. So you need to decide what is the version that you want that is going to be preserved in the database. Okay, so that's the way it works. So let's first have a very brief introduction to understand the main concepts and then I will go a bit deeper to use the concepts we need to learn. But Git is so used that you will find plenty of information on the internet. So I'm going to give you some uh, basic ideas, some basic concepts so that you can start thinking about it. and. You can be sure about something that is if you have a problem with your code in the sense that uh, people change something, probably there's a git command that can help you with that. So always search because we'll be uh, as astonished as uh, how powerful this tool is. Okay, so let's start. So that's the idea. So you have one file. And instead of having a single version of the file, actually we have several versions. Why? You do have versions to allow people to concurrently change the file. Okay, this is nice till the time you need to merge, but I will talk about merging the work of different people later. Okay? So these are the basic concepts you need to understand. You have the workspace where you are changing the code. Okay, so where you are changing the files. Then, when your files are ready, you can move them to the staging repository. In the staging repository means that they are ready to be versioned. Then you can move them to the local repository. The local repository is in your machine, where you can have several versions of the same uh, file. So it means that you actually can have versioning on, on your side. So you can have versioning versioning on your side. So this bold line does the, the, the separation between your local environment and the shared environment. So on the right you have the remote repository where is the code that is shared between you and your colleagues. So it's what, what actually is in uh, GitHub. When you do a clone or a fetch, as you see in this arrow, the yellow arrows, you copy the code from the remote repository to your local repository and to your workspace. What is actually your workspace? Your space is where, where, where you are changing the files with Eclipse or IntelliJ, you are working in the workspace. So you are working with different versions of the file. Okay? You are changing the file. Okay? But always you don't create a version. If you want to, to create a version of a file, you need to add it. So you have git add, you need to add it to the staging area. And then 
you need to commit it. And when you commit, you create a new version of the file in your local repository. Afterwards, if you want your version of the file to be visible to others, to your colleagues, you need to do a git push, which is the arrow in green. So that moves the file, your version of the file, actually not only the file, but all the files that you changed in a particular commit, you move them to the, the remote repository, which means that now your colleagues get, can get through a fetch, a git fetch or a git clone to get the work you have done and start working on top or considering the work that you, you have done. Of course, the same way you have you can move a file from the work, workspace to the staging area, to the locker area, you can have com uh, commands that roll back this, for instance. You can move a, a, a file to the staging area with a git add, and with the git reset file, you can move it back to the workspace. Okay? And with a git reset, you can change your workspace to have the, the particular values, the particular values for the files when we have done a commit, a particular commit. And git diff and git allows you to compare uh, between your current stage in the workspace and what is in the staging area and what is in the local repository. Finally, a git pool is one operation that is a, uh, that, that is a git fetch Okay, but at the same time, besides a git fetch, besides copying what is in the remote repository to your local repository, also changes in your workspace. So you immediately start working with the changes that are in the remote repository. Okay, so that's the way you're going to work. So basically, you have your local space. GitHub allows you to have versions of your work in the local space, and when, whenever you want, you can just publish your, 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 your versions in the local space to the remote repository that is assessed by your colleagues with a git push, push or get their work so that you can consider your work while, while you perform your tasks by getting, do, doing a git fetch and a git clone. Now I'm going to show in an example how to create an example where you create a file. So you have the origin repository, which is a central repository where you have a file. Usually in Git, everything is identified by an, an hash code. So these hash codes are unique, and the hash code identifies a particular, the, 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 identifies a set of files. So it identifies a particular point in the history of your repository. Okay. When you do a Git clone, actually you copy from the remote repository to your local repository. And actually, you have exactly the same values, so that you have the same hash code, you have the same files. What the, this figure sh shows you is that two different users, two different developers, developer A and developer B, they just clone the origin repository. Afterwards, I can show a little bit the names of these. So, by default, the, or the origin repository is called the master. Okay, and when you just clone it in your local repository, you have uh, you will find something called origin master, and what is origin master refers to what is on the other side. Okay, I will explain this better to distinguish between origin master, master, and add. The best way to see it is let's change something. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just we have hello world file and which is an attract because I just add it so it is in my working space and in some point I add it to the staging area so I do I execute this command git add and the name of the file so the file is added but nothing changed in my versions because it was not yet committed so but when I commit it what github does so I am developer a it just creates a new hash code and says now the top of my repository, local repository, is as the hash code 901F. Okay, look that now the pointers move. My master move and my local adder move, but my origin stills 
the pointing to the same than in the origin repository. This provides many information that actually I'm ahead of one commit from the origin repository, so I'm not in the same uh, having the same information. It means that people that look at the code from the origin repository, from the remote repository, are not seeing the same code that uh, we already developed. Okay. Then, if I want them to see my results, what I do is a git push. And by doing a git push, two things happen. One is that my code is copied to the remote repository, and the pointer of origin master now advances to be together in my local repository with the master and the head. So now everything is synchronized between the remote and the local repository. Okay? And now I suggest if you want to test commands, you can use these sites. Okay? Okay. Good work.